The president comparing the inquiry against him to a racist and painful chapter in American history, tweeting, take a look, all Republicans must remember what they are witnessing here, a lynching. Yeah, right off the bat, let me just say, I noticed while editing this video that I have a wet spot on my shoulder that shows up pretty good in the video. Just before I started recording, I was holding my son and surprise, he drooled all over me. That's just stay at home dad life for you. You know how I always say that the Democrats and their media hold their political opposition to standards that they don't hold themselves to, or it's always different when they do it. Well, this is yet another undeniable example of this two-tier system of standards. Over the last few days, the Dems and their media have been manufacturing outrage over Trump's latest Twitter troll calling actions being taken against him lynching. And by the way, I have no doubt that he knew the media would react this way, and they haven't disappointed. The media claims that lynching is yet another word in the growing list of words that can't be said by white people. Why? Because at one time, black people were lynched. But what they failed to say is that white people were also lynched. Lynching is not a racial term, and it refers to anybody who's been hanged unlawfully. Now, the problem with this entire made-up scandal is that the Democrats in their media use the exact same word to describe the impeachment of Bill Clinton. Ah, but he's a Democrat, and as we all know, Democrats are judged by a different set of standards. What we are doing, or what we are doing here, is not a prosecution, it's a persecution. And indeed, it is a political lynching. I will not vote for this lynching in the people's house. I will vote against these resolutions. Even if the president should be impeached, history is going to question whether or not this was just a partisan lynching. They feels to me like we're taking a step down the road to becoming a political lynch mob. This isn't about sex. I agree with you. This is about getting rid of the president of the United States. The whole idea is a lynch mob mentality. That's pretty juicy, but guess what? It wasn't just the Democrats, but also their media. Much like today, the media was just an extension of the Democrat party and would report their talking points as unbiased news coverage. In one case, the New York Times reported, quote, later, Representative Ike Skelton, Democrat of Missouri, said the Republicans wanted to, quote, decapitate their commander in chief. Representative Steve R. Rothman, a New Jersey Democrat, complained of, quote, Republican juggernaut driven by the right wing. Representative Patrick J. Kennedy, Democrat of Rhode Island, a nephew of the late President John F. Kennedy, spoke of a, quote, political lynching. And Representative Danny K. Davis, an Illinois Democrat, denounced what he described as a, quote, lynching. What the article doesn't have is any outrage or disapproval of using the word lynching. Are we to believe that they would be so easy on Republicans had they all just repeated what Trump said? They're raking Lindsey Graham over the coals right now just for defending Trump. Okay, now this one is a devastating example. A Baltimore Sun reporter in 1998 said, quote, So here we are, my fellow Americans. Clinton lied under oath, and that warrants impeachment, right? Some say no. A lie stemming from a private matter doesn't matter. A lie in such a situation is understandable. Most any man or woman would have done the same. Impeachment for such a minor offense would hurt the country more than Clinton's lies ever did. Besides, this whole thing looks like a political lynching, an attempt to overturn two elections. You don't say, an attempt to overturn the election? That sounds a lot like what's happening today. The author of this particular piece, Dan Rodericks, is still with the Baltimore Sun and fiercely anti-Trump based on his Twitter feed. He's also posting and retweeting outrage over Trump's use of the word, despite the fact he used it to describe Clinton's impeachment in 1998. I guess it's different when they do it. Yet another example of this came from CBS News in 2001 in an article written by Amy Peachy when they described the GOP as a lynch mob saying, quote, the GOP lynch mob is still trying to string up the fledgling Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Imagine that, using the word lynching in regards to economic policy. Amy Peachy still works for CBS and is, of course, fiercely anti-Trump on Twitter. Or how about columnist Mark Shields, who wrote about Newt Gingrich in 2004, quote, 
Four years later, Speaker Gingrich led a family values House Republican lynch mob bent on stringing up and impeaching the faithless and lying husband who was the President of the United States and a Democrat. Gee, I can't possibly imagine what their excuse will be for this obvious hypocrisy. The Clinton process was ferociously partisan. I personally don't think this one feels that way. You got that? It's different because Clinton's impeachment was partisan. And of course, we know the Democrats and their media aren't partisan at all. I mean, it's not like they've been trying to impeach Trump since day one. So what about the argument that Clinton's impeachment was partisan, thus legitimizing the use of the word lynching? What was Clinton impeached for? He was impeached because he lied under oath during a sexual assault and rape investigation. That's also commonly known as obstruction of justice. That's right. Bill Clinton was being accused of sexual harassment, sexual assault, and rape, then lied under oath during the investigation. So, no, Clinton's impeachment was 100% legitimate. If you want any more proof of these double standards, how about this man, John Meacham, delegitimizing credible sexual harassment, assault, and rape allegations as partisan and the Me Too era. It shouldn't really surprise me, I guess, because at the time, the media, Democrats, and in particular Hillary Clinton were attacking and trying to discredit Bill Clinton's accusers. Oddly, they didn't have the same respect for whistleblowers back then. The accusers uh, of Bill Clinton back in the 90s uh, were never given the credence and uh, treated with the same respect uh, that these women are being treated. So here we have yet another irrefutable example of the media enforcing double standards against their political opposition. And no doubt they'll just ignore it and carry on with their deceptive, hypocritical practices. Just so you know, I have tweeted out to Mr. Rodericks for an explanation to his contradictory reactions, but he still hasn't responded and I doubt he will. If he does, you can find the reaction on my Twitter and Facebook pages, which you can find the links for in the description and pinned comment. Thanks to all of you and keep coming back.